Hello, my pod angels, and welcome to another installment of Who Is She? Our Meet the Herb series, where I am taking it back to basics and sharing my education with you guys and really diving into individual herbs, their personality, their unique uses, their history, and how you can bring these herbs into your life in a safe and educated way in order to improve your health, both mentally and physically. So as you guys know, I talked about this on Instagram. I'm really excited about this series because I feel like the best way to become a good herbalist is to date plants, to really give them time, get to know them, figure out their quirks, use the herbs on yourself that you're studying, um, either alone or in blends, in teas, taste them, learn everything there is to know about them. Go and visit them where they grow. Look at their actual structure and what the appearance of the plant can teach you because there's so many clues in the way a plant looks physically. And really become a master of each and every herb that you study and don't rush through it because there are so many plant allies in this world and they each deserve our undivided attention because they are so rich in what they give us and how they help us to come back to ourselves and come back to the earth. The plants are truly our teachers and more than ever right now where the world is just really going through it. We need to rely on these allies and become friends with them and meet them and know that although we can't currently see our human friends in person right now, we can absolutely start to develop and cultivate relationships with our plant friends and they can absolutely help us not only to handle physical stress, but to feel less alone. When I go out and I take a walk and I sit with my mugwort patch in my special spot, I feel so seen and held, and every time I see a plant on a walk that I know and recognize and use in my practice, I'm like, hey, I know her. (laughs) There she is. Look, say hi, and I'll actually wave to the plant, and I'll feel like, oh my gosh, that is a friendly face, a familiar face, even though plants don't really have faces, but you get me. It just makes you feel like there are friends all around you. Plants are our teachers and our tools and to help us navigate this really difficult human life in a better way. And that is why today's episode is going to be about Avena. Avena sativa, the beautiful common oat plant that we eat for breakfast as oatmeal, but that can be so much more to our nervous systems, to our adrenals, to our guts. This plant is pure magic, and I feel like this plant is our ultimate ally right now for what the world is going through. When we are depleted and disconnected and stressed, trying to adjust to a whole new routine and trying to accept all the chaos that's going on in the world right now, it really takes a toll on us and it can dry us out, it can stress us out, it can deplete our nervous systems, it can create this fraying of the nerves where we feel sensitive to everything and frustrated and, you know, almost hyper annoyed by things that our partner does or things that we're doing. It's just so easy to get frustrated right now. And this plant, Avena, is our greatest tool during this age of 2020. So you'll find out why in the episode, and I'm not going to just talk about using the plant one way. I'm going to talk about several different ways we can use medicine from this plant, both in terms of ourselves and our loved ones when we recognize that they could really benefit from this herb. So we're going to talk about oatmeal. We're going to talk about oat tops, fresh milky oats, and we're also going to talk about oat straw. So that is all the same plant, but it's different parts. And each of these parts will have a totally different biological effect and benefit. And it's important to know the difference between them and when to use each one. So for someone who is not feeling too stressed, but just feels a little bit depleted and low energy and maybe is experiencing some muscle cramping or some increased PMS and menstrual pain, oat straw would be a really nice choice for that person to actually just replenish their minerals and their nutrients, especially magnesium. So 
In this way, we can use oat straw infusions during quarantine to just keep us nourished, to really keep our mineral reserves high so that we don't end up getting burnt out and depleted. For others who are dealing with really intense stress during this time, maybe they have a loved one who was affected by COVID or who passed, or maybe they can't visit their loved ones who are in a hospital or a nursing home, or maybe they lost their job or, you know, all of the different forms of pain that people are dealing with right now and trauma, fresh milky oats would be a beautiful medicine for them because that acts a lot deeper on actually restoring and rebuilding the nerves and also helping to restore and rebuild the adrenals. So that would be for someone who has literally been grinding themselves down to the bone, worrying every day, you know, working overtime, trying to make ends meet, trying to be there for their family and advocate for them. Someone who is really deeply stressed right now, milky oats is beautiful for them. And as an example, you know, my dad and I have been taking our tinctures and our herbs and our teas every single day. I have him on a super intense protocol (laughs) to not only heal from COVID, but to you know, really bolster him and build him up for what is to come with the care of my mom. And so fresh milky oats is a tincture that I put in his elixir every single day with all the other (laughs) tinctures that I blend for him. And it has been just so wonderful to just keep him a little bit more even keeled and balanced because he's not firing off and reacting to every single stressor and bump in the road the way that he was before because his nerves are not as sensitive. So I've really seen it work magic for him. And I just feel like it's such an important and underutilized medicine because we think of oats as, oh, that's just a food. That's just oatmeal. But honestly, it's so, so, so much more. And to be a good herbalist, you don't have to have this, you know, Rolodex of really exotic, expensive plants that you use. They don't have to be special plants that no one's ever heard of that you have to go deep in the jungle to find. They don't have to be rare plants. They just have to be the allies that grow around you and that have been used for thousands of years. And you just have to know how to use them in the right way. So something as common as oats can be just as powerful as a super magical seed from the middle of the jungle as long as you apply it properly. So I really encourage you to examine some of the common medicines that grow near your house or that we eat as food that we totally overlook because that is where not only people can actually have more accessibility because they're commonly found and less expensive, but that is how you can really get people into taking herbs because you can explain to them, hey, this tincture of milky oat seed comes from the same plant that you use to make your morning oatmeal. Would you like to learn more about it? Would you like to know the benefits? And you can pique people's curiosity that way. And you can also tap into that sense of familiarity that may otherwise be a barrier for them getting into herbal medicine. So that's my little spiel about the plants. I hope you guys are absolutely loving this series. I got so much awesome feedback about agrimony last week. I think you guys really liked how short and sweet the episode was, but also how jam-packed it was with information. And so many of you said that you either know or you are an agrimony person, and that you're going to go out there, find an agrimony tincture or a tea and experiment with it yourself. And that is my ultimate honor and goal with this series is to encourage you guys and empower you guys to have the information on how to use these medicines in your daily life so that you can actually bring them in and experiment with them and meet them and make them part of your toolbox. And pretty soon you won't even need me. (laughs) You'll be learning about them yourself and writing your own monographs and teaching your friends. So This whole series is about each one teach one. I hope that you guys are getting so much value out of it and I absolutely love doing it. So if you do have any requests for a specific plant that you want me to cover next, please send them in, DM me on Instagram, send me an email and I would love to hear it. Enjoy this episode on Avena. Stay juicy. Stay juicy. (laughs) 
go ahead, Nick. Well, hello, guys. Oh, gosh. How do I stay juicy? <laughs> <laughs> are you a Leo? I'm a Leo. Okay, all my best friends are Leo. Yes. You are a lymphatic specialist. Yes. You are a craniosacral therapist. Yes. Meditation is a really nice way to connect with yourself. Intimacy with the self. Yes. We can't be drinking that rose water all willy-nilly. Oh, is that right? I just never knew this world existed. Yeah, and if you're, you know, enjoying that with your morning coffee, like, take a minute and breathe it in. Breathe it in. Breathe it in. Hi everyone. Today is another installment of our series, Who Is She? And today we're talking about our girl, Avina. She is a medicine. She is a mineral rich tonic. She is a food, you know, she's oatmeal. And she is our juiciness, the juicy aspect of what's the juice. So Avina Sativa is the full Latin name. And that is literally a way cooler way to say oatmeal. Like, what do you want for breakfast? Oh, just some Avina Sativa. So we're going to talk about her actions, her flavor, her energetics. And we're also going to talk about the difference between the parts of oat. Because we have, again, the milky oat seed, which is more of the medicine factor that has a richer um, nervine and kidney strengthening action. Then we have the oat straw, which is what I have in front of me if you're watching on video. And that is the seedless part of the plant that you make um, a very mineral rich overnight infusion with. And then we also have the oatmeal, which is what happens when the milky oat seed matures and becomes this oat food that we can roll and cut and cook with. So there's so many things that we can do with this plant. And I think because oatmeal is like your classic, almost like boring, been there, done that breakfast food, we overlook what a medicine it can be. But in reality, it's one of our most important yin nourishing foods that really helps to increase our essence, our lubrication, our ability to slow down and relax and um, even just the the lubrication and the flexibility of our nervous system. That's one of the coolest actions that we have in terms of Avena is um, it's a nervous system trofo restorative, which means it can literally restore and rebuild our nerves in the most magical way. So let's get right into it. And let's talk about, again, let's just reiterate those parts, right? Because I want to make sure that we know the difference. Um, so milky oat seed, again, this is the stage of the plant where we have this really short window of time each summer and the maturing seeds enter this milky oat stage and they just become this gold mine of medicine. So we would use fresh milky oats or a milky oat seed tincture for someone who's really, really, really depleted, really frazzled, really needs adrenal support, but also just like is too sensitive for any form of stimulating adrenal support, like any of the stimulating adaptogens. They can't even do American ginseng. They can't do rhodiola. They can't do regular ginseng. Those are just way too stimulating for them. This is a person who can't do caffeine or maybe they're relying on caffeine, but it's just making everything worse and even giving them the jitters, but they can't get out of bed without it. Like that's her. (laughs) That's the milky oat seed Avena person. Because again, in these episodes, I want to keep coming back to seeing the person and the herbs so that you guys get used to looking at your symptoms or looking at someone and meeting someone and automatically thinking of the herb that matches that person. Remember that as herbalists, we are matchmakers, right? We are constantly um, seeing these patterns and connecting the person to the plant. So that's what we use milky oat seed for. Um, That adrenally depleted person who needs a yin tonic, who maybe even is dealing with depression because they are so adrenally depleted. That would be like a kidney depression in Chinese medicine. We have a liver depression where there's some anger and frustration and stagnation involved. But milky oat seed Avena, she is the person who is depressed because she is done. Like she just doesn't have it left in her and it's almost not even in her control. Like it's not like, oh, let me go to therapy and like talk this out and work through my depression. It's like a, I need to be nourished before I can even compartmentalize what's going on in my life. So this is going to give us that restorative tonic vibe. 
Then we have, again, when that milky oat seed stage hardens and becomes the oat, that's when we have our oatmeal. So this is really good for someone who, in terms of Ayurveda, needs more kapha in their life. They need to slow down and nourish and maybe they need to put a little weight on. Maybe they need to be more lubricated. Maybe they have really dry skin and dry hair and their hair is falling out. We're going to totally do some oatmeal with ghee for them. But because this is such a strong yin tonic food, a moistening food and a moistening herb, for people who have some spleen dampness, like maybe a lot of bloating and some gut dysbiosis, we're going to be careful to add a bit of cinnamon to that oatmeal or even to add a bit of cinnamon to our milky oat seed formula because whenever you put a bit of warming, drying, spicy cinnamon or ginger into a yin nourishing formula, it just gives that little bit of protection to the spleen and protects the spleen from becoming too damp. So we don't want to exacerbate that. We want to be mindful of nourishing one system that's yin depleted without creating an imbalance in another. So yes, that person who needs the oatmeal support, we're doing oatmeal with ghee and cinnamon. (laughs) And finally, we have, again, what I have in front of me, which is oat straw. Um, Still a vena sativa, but it is the seedless stalks rather than the milky oat seed. And these stalks are just so rich in minerals. These, These are basically a food, but instead of consuming them as a food and chewing on them like we're a horse, we are putting them in a mason jar and we're packing it into the mason jar. And we're filling that mason jar with really hot water. And I have directions on how to do this on my blog. It's called a mineral rich overnight infusion. So I'll put that in the show notes, but we're covering that plant matter with really hot water. We're sealing the mason jar and we're leaving it on the counter overnight because in order to extract those minerals, which are rock-like, we need heat and we need time. That's how we're going to get the best medicine out of oat straw. And that is how I believe this drink in front of me was made. It's probably an overnight infusion because that is just the tradition and we respect tradition. And yeah, this is so beautiful because it's so rich in magnesium. And magnesium is a supplement that I totally take. I kind of can't go without it. I love it. And a lot of my friends take and I recommend to a lot of people because it's pretty safe to say that we're all magnesium deficient because of the stress in our world. Um, But, you know, it's also an extra cost to take a magnesium supplement. And maybe if we're looking for a a one-two punch, maybe if we're looking for a way to enter into the world of herbalism really slowly and gently, and we know that we need both magnesium and adrenal support, especially from those minerals, we are going to go in with an overnight infusion of oat straw to give your adrenals that love And to also give you that bioavailable magnesium so that you don't need to spend your budget this month on a magnesium supplement. If you're really consistent with this, I feel like that's enough. And that could be a really nice replacement because it's kind of like getting more bang for your buck because it's more available and it's in a, a form that our bodies can digest, right? Like we've been eating and using plants for how long? You could just kind of hold on to it a little bit better. So I really like this for that magnesium deficient, stressed out, adrenally depleted person. And although the milky oat seed is a bit stronger, again, and is used in tincture form, this is just so nice. Like this is a a natural electrolyte drink almost. Like you're getting all these minerals and you are replenishing yourself and it's just as hydrating, if not more than plain water. So if you're someone who doesn't even like drinking a lot of plain water, maybe this is a way that you get yourself to drink a little bit more and you know that you're doing something really good for yourself. So I'm going to share from a monograph that I've gotten from my school. Again, I always like to give props to my teachers um, and just share who my teachers are because, again, I would not have any of this information if it were not for their materials, their handouts, their monographs, and just their phrasing and their words and their knowledge. So this information is specifically coming from my teacher, Richard Mandelbaum, and I believe you can find him at richardmandelbaum.com. richardmandelbaum.com. He's, <laughs> that kind of rhymes. He's such an amazing herbalist. And like, I just always refer people to him because he's been doing this for so long. I've had one of my best friends go see him. Like he just, he knows what he's doing. And he's one of my favorite teachers of all time. He has a m- monograph on fresh milky oats, that whole like stronger tincture 
form, which you can do in a tea, but I've taken it as a tincture myself. And he really likes to go into the information on that. So we'll start with that and then we'll finish talking about this oat straw infusion that I have in front of me. So in terms of the fresh milky oat form of Avena, she is, flavor-wise, she's sweet. That's really all we have going on here. And I mean, you know, the, the oat straw maybe has a bit more of a bitter note. I'm going to taste it right now. Yeah, this is mostly sweet too. So that's really all you're getting from the oat plant because that's what we need from it. We need that sweet building, grounding um, nourishment that's going to build us back up because the sweet flavor builds us. Too much of it depletes us, but gently sweet like we see in oat where it's naturally occurring is going to build us. Um, but again, I just really want to reiterate that anytime you're having something that's purely sweet, you're going to add a little bit of something that's warming just to protect that spleen because sweet resonates with the spleen. And again, too much sweet will create the dampness. So the energetics, aka the temperature of each herb, some people are really cold and you don't want to give them too many cold herbs. And some people are really hot. So someone who's hot all the time and is always asking for air conditioning, you're not going to give them a bunch of ginseng, which is going to make them even hotter and more frustrated. So fresh milky oat is moist and it's gently warming. So that's really nice because when you're depleted, most often you're cold. So we already see how this plant is fitting the depleted person, how it's matching her, right? She's depleted. She's cold. We're bringing in the oats that are gently warming because we can't deal with too much warm. We can't deal with too much stimulation because we are depleted. <laughs> We're tired. We don't want to be overstimulated. We want to be yin and slow down and rebuild. So it is considered a supreme nervine tonic by herbalists. So again, it's like for those frazzled nerves. Mm -hmm.